Build a wall. Build a wall. It is a chant we all know far too well. <laughs> it's heard even in the halls here at Trinity Catholic, although joking. Immigration is a huge topic right now, whether that be in the politics or media or even our own communities. Although this topic is greatly and widely discussed, not much is known about the actual hardships and experiences that immigrants go through to come here and become United States citizens. It's time to get educated on this topic. I've interviewed an immigrant herself, read many accounts from immigrants uh, from Mexico, adjusting to life here in the United States, and seen the actual form or document that immigrants have to fill out in order to become United States citizens. Um, in order for you to get a better understanding of what immigrant, immigrants go through, I will inform you about a typical journey to the United States that a Mexican immigrant would undertake. The obstacles and adventure to get here, and then finally the problems that they face once they actually arrive. So getting here is an incredible feat to take on for anyone who dares to attempt to cross the border. Uh, I talked to San Juan Castaneda, um, that might ring a bell to some of you guys, that's our uh, junior classmate, Martin uh, Castaneda's mother, who immigrated here from Mexico. Um, I was appalled by her story. Um, she, it was a very lengthy and dangerous process for her to get here. Um, the reason why she wanted to come here was because uh, she wasn't making any money in Mexico. Um, her, some of her brothers were living up here in the United States. And she kind of wanted to be a part of that and experience um, the safe and um, prosperous environment that the United States had to offer for her. Um, a sad part of her story was that she was unable to take the children that she had at the time because she didn't have enough money. Um, what people would usually do is uh, buy uh, escorts to take them across the border, which is very, very expensive. So San Juana made the trip by herself and then uh, once she got there, she started, um, she got a job at McDonald's and then started sending money back here to her family. Um, a little bit about the journey she undertook. Um, she drove up to Juarez with one of her brothers where she met up with her escorts. Um, from then, the escorts took her to a section of the Rio Grande that was kind of shallower and a little bit narrower uh, part of the river so that they could cross over into United States territory. Um, while they were waiting for a signal on the other side, um, this is kind of where it gets scary, um, one of the uh, escorts uh, tried harassing her, things like that. Um, she, so uh, in order to prevent this, she started making noise and the guy stopped. He was like, you're going to get us all caught. And so she, uh, she was able to counteract that. Um, she was traveling with two other people and they did absolutely nothing to help her. Um, she was pretty, pretty embarrassed by that. Um, so she finally got across the river being carried on someone's shoulders because she couldn't swim So at this point she's terrified of what's going to happen and um, She got across uh, Got across the highway, which was even more dangerous six lanes cars going at incredible fast speeds No one stopping obviously so she was terrified at that moment as well um, once she got across the highway she saw the city lights of El Paso and screamed joy and said it was one of the happiest moments of her life. It was a very special moment to hear that from her. Um, I've read many accounts uh, of similar stories in the book, I Don't Have Wings. Uh, it's a book by Philip Garrison. It was published by the University of Arizona Press in 2006. Um, one of the different stories I heard in that book was that children uh, led people through the sewers uh, from Mexico to the United States in, uh, to El Paso, um, children ages 10 and 12 would be doing this. They had uh, figured out the routes to take and things like that so they can make money to help out their families. So getting here is just half of the problem as adjusting to life here in the United States is challenging from the eyes of an immigrant as well. Uh, the first thing you need when you get here is obviously your immediate needs. So we're looking at housing and jobs. Um, so places to stay and jobs were usually uh, helped out by families. So they would usually stay with relatives or um, places like that. Usually the escorts had a place where they could stay uh, for a couple of weeks until they got on their feet. Um, jobs weren't a huge deal for the immigrants were uh, able and willing to do jobs that Americans uh, wouldn't normally be willing to do. 
um, language, learning English. Um, <laughs> it, it was hard enough for us to learn Spanish here in high school. Um, they have to learn English and to be able to speak it fluently. Simple things like going to the restaurant to order food or even going to the grocery store were very challenging uh, just because of the fact that they couldn't speak the native language. And then legalization was also a huge deal. If you would go ahead and click the next slide. Uh, once she clicks on that, it will take her to the government website um, where we can look at the N-400 document, which is the document that immigrants have to fill out. It will be the first bullet point on there. Um, right. And it's, uh, if we can get it up here real quickly, uh, it's actually 20 pages long. Um, that's just the document to get the process started. 20 pages long, and it's filled with all kinds of different questions and different uh, things for the immigrants to answer. Um, there it is. Yep, and then if you just scroll down maybe a little bit, you can kind of get a feel for what you have to do. Um, it's also very expensive. Immigrationimpact.com, uh, uh, I got this from an article. Um, written by Paul McDaniel, who was a former researcher from uh, Urban Regional Analysis. Um, he said it costs on average $680, $680 just to file this one. This is a typical immigrant experience, and it sounds fun, doesn't it? No matter what gets thrown at these people, they persevere and make it. Before judging these people, maybe we should ask ourselves, what would we do in their position? Thank you for listening.